Welcome back guys, it's spring here, we're back in Alert Bay, back on the boat, and we've got a couple of projects to get done before we can get off the dock this year. Probably one of the biggest ones that we need to tackle is this electrical project that I have planned. Our boat here only has like 200 amp hours of lead acid batteries on it, which you know, it's pretty good, but the technology is pretty old. It's from the 90s and it's not as efficient as some of the modern day electronics. We also don't have any solar on the boat. So we've been running into this ongoing problem of uh, pretty well just constantly running out of electricity all the time because we can only really recharge it from the alternator on the engine. So that's been a bit of a problem. So today we're going to start the project of relaying out all of our electrical. I want to relocate the batteries from the nav station here on the port side of the boat, pop them in under in the quarter berth. We're going to move all of our electronics out of the nav station and under there actually and really condense it down into a smaller footprint. That way we can use the nav station for extra storage for the galley and continue on with our galley refit that we started last year and kind of tie it all together in a bit of our master plan here. We're going to turn the nav station into a big storage area. We're going to put shelving in there so that we can store all of our pantry goods rather than having to root through all of the you know, nooks and crannies of the boat all the time just to get like a tin of beans and some tomato paste. So that's going to be pretty cool and it's going to tie the whole galley together, help us out with the electricity, we're going to have more power, better lighting, and it's just going to make the boat a hell of a lot easier to live in. So our first step is to turn the power off so we don't electrocute ourselves and then we're going to disconnect the batteries and start pulling it apart from the batteries up through the DC system. I've been pretty well wanting to do this since we bought the boat. It's just, technology has come such a long way since the 90s and like the inverter and battery charger thing here, I think it was out of date in 1993 which is like, I would have been three. So we're using some pretty old stuff and efficiency wise, like these two batteries, like on paper should be able to get us off grid for quite some time, especially if you're topping them up all the time with solar and a little bit of engine power here and there. But in our experience cruising the last two years, they just haven't been able to cut the mustard at all. It's like we use a light and like they're dead, like five minutes later, it's terrible. You leave, the inverter on and like they're just gone like in 10 minutes it's they're more or less useless in this configuration so we're hoping that by doing this we'll actually be able to like you know run a light on the boat at night which would just be amazing an led light because the lights that we have at the moment are incandescent and they put out of a lot of heat not enough to warm the boat obviously but like yeah just really really an inefficient use of electricity <laughs> What I'm taking out next is the starter battery. We have two Anything Group 27 batteries as a house bank. And then we just have a starter battery for the engine, which also might be on its way out. It hasn't been turning the engine over particularly well. We might end up replacing it once we're said and done, but at the moment it'll come out. It shouldn't really make a difference in the way that we end up reinstalling the system because it's easy to swap the starter battery out at the end if we decide to get a new one. We found the incredibly up to date with the code wingnut. I don't believe you meant to use these on a boat. Somebody has. Totally fine for building a house, but apparently not for a boat. Vibration can undo them. <laughs> wow, eh? It's huge. It's heavy. Check out the size of that transformer. Absolutely massive. How much do you think it weighs? At least like 20 pounds. Ugh. So, old one? Old one. New one. New one. Apparently this was a pretty snazzy unit back in its day, but these days it is a dinosaur. Comparatively, this one weighs like three or four pounds. It's like pretty light. I mean, someone could still use it. It's not going in the trash. Oh but... yeah, it still works perfectly. We'll um, see if we can pass it on to somebody who needs it. The great inverter, it's 
a great battery charger. So if you don't have an inverter and a battery charger, let us know. I'm not gonna be able to send it to you. It's way too heavy. If you can come pick it up in Alert Bay, <laughs> you're welcome to have it. I was planning on reusing most of the components from the old electrical system, like, you know, your AC switch, your battery switch, all the other switches, cause switches are great. But on this breaker, like all the terminals are nice and solid, except for this one, which is really wiggly. I'm, I'm not quite sure if it's meant to be wiggly, but I don't think that the hot side of a breaker should have this much play in it. So I think we might end up replacing this one just in case. But the rest, like this switch is good and these panels are good, so we'll we'll end up reusing them. You gotta love the way wiring comes out. You have a little bit of a lighter gauge wire spliced onto a heavier section of wire spliced back onto a lighter gauge of wire. Kind of cool. <laughs> it's very unique. I mean, technically it works, right? Like there's nothing really wrong with this except that you've got this big chunky piece of wire in between these other two lighter gauges of wire, but you are protected by this fuse. So really you're nice and safe. Only 20 amps should run through it. So one of the reasons we bought a Catalina 30 is because they're really, really easy to work on. They're very, very simple boats and everything's really accessible. There's no headliners, there's no veneer, there's no wood in the way with things run behind it. It's just straight up fiberglass, classic plastic, and that makes it really easy to access all the spaces, get behind things, change things. And in the 40 years that this boat's been around, People have been doing just that and it's resulted in quite a spaghetti mess. Like there's so much wire tucked in behind here and it's run every different way. There's a loom that runs up and then through the back into the engine compartment. There's a loom that runs underneath the sole and then into the back lazarette. So we have wiring that comes up through the cabinet. It comes up here, it branches up, up that way and then runs across the lazarette, right where you're putting things in and out and then comes to the control panel. And then we also have wiring that comes up from under the floor and comes up to the control panel and then runs this way. My plan is to strip all this wiring out so that there's no wires coming across the lazarette. So this wiring, I'm gonna strip back and we're gonna run it back up and through and so it all comes up in the one channel and is nice and neat and tidy. I've pulled the wiring harness out. I disconnected all the wires from the back of the control panel that needed to be disconnected so I could pull them back through and clean it up. But on the back of the wiring harness where it connects to the engine controls, there's a trailer hitch connector, which is this thing here. And it is so corroded that I could not for the life of me get it apart. I actually don't think that these things are really used in marine applications anymore. We're gonna cut it out, but well, I have cut it out. I'm gonna clean all the wiring harness off, inspect all the wire to make sure that it's not grounding out anywhere. There's nothing in the insulation that's chipped or cracked or anything like that. And then we'll clean it all up and try to reconnect it all so that we can get it going again. I'm really stoked that we're getting rid of this thing and that we're just doing this project in general.
So it's a new day today here down at the boat. We've stripped the wiring harness all the way back to the engine. I've pulled each individual wire out, cleaned it really thoroughly, inspected them to make sure that there's no sort of missing chunks of the insulation or bare wires or anything like that. They're all looking pretty good. Except I did discover that all the positive current coming out of the alternator runs through a 10 gauge wire all the way back to the amp meter and then to the batteries. So this is the wire that comes from the alternator carrying all of the juice that's going to the batteries. And it runs up in here into the amp meter and then straight back out via this one back to the batteries. It's kind of like a thing that isn't really done in boats anymore. It was done maybe like 40 years ago when this Catalina was built, but it's a bit of a fire hazard because you're pushing a lot of current through a really small wire over a really long run and it leads to the batteries not being charged very efficiently when it should be running through like a 4.0 wire just straight to the batteries. So that's going to be our plan to fix it. Instead of having these tiny little wires carrying all of that high amperage current around, we're just gonna have a big fat wire that takes it directly to the battery and bypasses all of this to make our charging system more reliable, safer, and less fire prone. At the moment, we've got all the wires cleaned up, they're inspected, and I'm gonna start to wrap them all up, make them into a nice tiny little bundle so that we can snake them back through to the control panels. We've got one side of the loom, and the other side of the loom and I'm about to connect them together with our positive to the starter and our negative running from the engine block and we'll make them all in a nice neat snake and run them back towards the aft end of the boat. Alison and I have zip tied all the cables together to form this lovely looking snake. It's nice and neat. It actually makes me really happy and satisfied. The next part of this job is to feed this underneath the cabin sole and have it come up where the battery cables will break off and then the rest of the cables will be zip tied and continue along to the engine controls. Now we can zip tie the rest of these together into a nice neat bundle and we'll pass it through to the back. Okay, I think I have worked it out. There's a whole bunch of positives that are led to a single post, and there's a whole bunch of grounding wires that are kind of all running through different wires back to the main engine block. We're taking positive power run through the amp meter here, and it runs to the ignition switch. It runs out of the ignition switch back to the engine. It's pulled power over here. It's pulling power over here. This lug here is being used as a common ground, and all the grounds are then run back to it, and with a wire running back to the engine bay. So I think instead of having all of this excessive wire, I'm just going to run a positive and a negative, and we'll put in a positive and a negative bus bar here in the engine bay, and that way we can have a power and a ground, and they can all just be nice and neat run from there through the single wire back to positive power and back to a negative ground log. This is actually kind of like the most exciting and rewarding part of the job. Up until this point, it's like everything's being pulled apart and it's finally the part of the project where we get to put things back together. And that just feels good. And it's definitely something I have wanted to do since we owned this boat is deal with this mess of wires, get rid of all of the wiring that's coming from all different directions and just make it one solid little neat mess that I know about. An older gentleman by the name of Colin, who's become a really good friend of ours over the last couple of weeks, offered for us to use this 
incredible workshop space. It actually used to be the old general store here in Alert Bay. So it is full of history. There's all these old artifacts and things that Colin has collected over the years. Has the most beautiful selection of timber, probably on the North Island. So it's been a real treat to get to have a workshop. In previous years, we have done all of our projects sort of on the dock with our stuff scattered everywhere. And having a workshop space with all the tools that we need, just steps from the dock, really, really makes things easier. So really, really grateful to Colin for his generosity and we're super, super stoked to get to use this space. As a part of our electrical refit, we've had to build a new electrical box, and this is the face panel for our electrical box. It's going to house the breakers, the AC switch, our main battery switch, as well as our bilge switches, and then the front panel is going to flap down so that you can access inside the electrical cabinet. It's made out of fur, and I think it came out really nice. I've finally got a chance to play with some fur, and I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. Colin actually owns a couple of heritage buildings in Alert Bay that he's been fixing up over the years. And although this workshop looks like it needs a lot of work, Colin has a vision to restore this entire building to be uh, a hotel similar to the Seine Boat Inn next door. It's really awesome that he's pouring so much time and effort into restoring the heritage buildings here in Alert Bay. We've moved all the electrical out of the cabinet over here and we've installed it now in the new cabinet that we've built underneath the companionway here. The batteries are installed, our new battery charger is installed, our new inverter is installed, our AC is hooked back up to the main breaker, it's run through a GCFI breaker as well so that everything downstream of that is ground fault protected. The end is in sight, I've just got the last couple of circuits to hook back up to the DC system and then we can call this project complete. It's been a lot of work but it's been really worthwhile to get to know the boat at this much more intimate electrical level and I feel like if anything happens in the future then I've got it mapped out in my head so well at this point that I could probably track down a fault pretty quick. Oh and we put in a DC shunt so that we can actually measure how much electricity we use which will give us a way better idea of what our consumption is and then also help us to inform our solar project that we're going to do down the track to work out how much solar we actually need to put on the boat. Now that we've got all the electrical relocated to the aft cabin, we are going to redesign this to be a pantry space. That way we kind of have all the food consolidated in one location and we can use the other spots throughout the boat to store things like tools and spare parts and all that stuff. So yeah, really excited. I think we're gonna build some shelves to put in here and just trial it out, see how that goes. And then once we're happy with the design, we'll make it a little bit more permanent. We made a template out of cardboard for the inside of the shelf and now we're just transcribing that template onto the plywood so that we can cut it out and then go install the first shelf. We've made some shelves, let's go see if they fit. I think the shelves are going to fit. We just have to work out the exact heights and the offsets that we need to put in for the rails so that we have enough clearance for the cans. But I think it'll work out well. Hey guys, just popping in here in real time because we need your help. We threw our hat into the ring for best emerging YouTube channel at the International Cruisers Awards this year. They are the biggest and most hyped up event in the boating community and we're up against some really amazing channels this year. If you find our channel helpful, if it brings joy to your life, if you find the videos entertaining or insightful, could you please just take a quick second to click the link down in the description, head over to the Young Cruisers page and vote for us as best emerging YouTube channel. It would really help us out a lot. It's super quick and easy. All you need to do is scroll down, click the thumbs up next to our profile, type in your email, 
click the box that says that you're not a robot, and then the most important step of all, confirm your email at the end. You don't get spam, it's free to enter. And to make this a little bit more fun for everybody, we're gonna have our own little giveaway. So when you vote, you'll get a voting number. If you can pop that number down in the comments below, we are gonna do a random draw at the end of the month and select one winner to win a pretty sweet prize. It's gonna be a mystery prize. <laughs> we don't even know what it is yet. So on October 4th, the International Cruises are gonna announce a winner and we're gonna announce our own winner from our audience who have voted. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your vote and we will see you all next week. Y'all are legends. See you then. Bye.